prior to beginning our painting, we're going to mix up our value. I have my burnt sienna and my ultramarine that I've mixed together. But I made sure I had two or three empty mixing areas on my palette so that I can mix various values. The middle value that I've added a little bit of water to, as you can see here in the video, uh, is probably the most important. It's the one we're going to be using the most. So I'll start with that middle value. And with that middle value, I'm painting horizontally back and forth, and I'm leaving white spots uh, where there might be white of the clouds there. Uh, we're going to build this up later. You will look at your resource photo to get you some ideas. We're basically wetting down this top section so that when we put the clouds in there, the wet into the wet, the paint will saturate and it will break apart and make it look more like clouds. Once you have that middle value down, then you're going to come in with your darker value. And as you can see, immediately when you put the paint on top of it, it starts to um, granulate and get those fuzzy places, which is what we want to give the illusion of clouds. Continuing to work, I'm just thinking about, all right, where do I want those clouds to, to be? And how might they be formed? So look again at your resource photos to get those ideas. I'm coming back in and I'm mixing up some more of that mid value. You're going to be using a lot of that. And once I have that sky first done, then I'm going to come in and do some long horizontal strokes for the water. Now notice I've left a, a fairly large white place between the sky and then you've got the horizon line coming down. Also notice that when I was painting the, the water that I've left some white places. I came in and I, and I also kind of darkened some of the areas in the clouds and now I want to paint a mirror image in the water. So I'm looking as to how the lines of the clouds are in the water and seeing where those are at and I just want to replicate that. Now I'm putting in some uh, ripples into the water which is a secret in how you paint them. So going across horizontally and making sure that you make it appear as though the water is moving just a bit. Here I am mixing up some more of the darkest value because I want to use that once again. This is just the ultramarine and burnt sienna and I'm coming in once that the sky had started to dry, uh, coming in and adding just a little bit of that dark right where the horizon is. Now what I'm thinking about here is I'm thinking about, okay, this is going to be land and this is where those boats are. As in my photograph that I'm looking at, there's boats all along on that left-hand side. Now I'm coming in with my brush, and I'm making sure the tip is pointed, and I'm moving my hand back and forth to create the ripples in the water as I'm painting the masts. I do that here in the, the middle ground with the, with the large grouping of ships, and then I'm also doing it in the background. It's okay if those lines you're painting are not solid. It's okay if the ripples go through it. In fact, that helps an awful lot to give the illusion that the water is moving a bit. I'm coming in now with that tip of my brush again, adding some of the mass in the background. Once again, when you're painting the mass, it's perfectly okay if you leave some of the white of the paper showing. It's okay if they're not perfectly straight. Uh, so you may want to practice on another piece of paper first, doing your lines. But look at your photograph and see what direction the masks are leaning and if they're overlapping and get a good idea of where you're going to place them before you put your brush down on the paper. Also, make sure you're watching the size. You don't want them to be too big or too thick. Uh, you want them to look like they, they are still far away in the distance. If you make them too thick, they're going to look like they're too close. So once again, just practicing another piece of paper will work. You can see that one's just a little bit crooked, and I've also left some of the paper showing through. It doesn't have to be a solid line. Once you get the mass on, you can start to see, oh yes, those are ships definitely in the background. Now I'm using my rigger brush because there were some of the masks I wanted to be really thin and with the rigger brush you can get it a lot thinner than with the regular brush. 
a simple upward stroke sometimes will get the mass created. It's a nice effect for texture. And then taking the rigger brush and I'm adding some reflections in the water uh, for those masks that are in the background. Also adding some more ripples coming across. And adding some more reflections using a lighter value because those aren't quite as dark as the main masks, but they are still there and you still want to uh, place them as a reflection in the water. Now once again, I'm coming in and accentuating some of the ripples in the water. Remember the water is darker as it's closer to you and gets lighter as it goes farther away. Also remember that it is a reflection of what you're seeing in the sky. So there's a diagonal in my sky, so I want to make sure that that diagonal is seen in my water as well. Remember, do not paint it solid. You want to leave some of the lighter values showing to give that illusion of the waves. I start out with a lighter value, and then I just mixed up some more of the darker value. Again, continuously looking at that horizontal line going across. Finishing up my painting and adding some final touches on the darkened areas. And here's the finished painting.